It is time for your housing breakfast show, Housing Development. Good morning. Glad to have you join me on another informative episode of the program. As always, I am your housing diva, Fleur Annie. Before we delve into our lineup for today, let's see the news making rounds in the sector. It's about four weeks to the opening ceremony of Abuja International Housing Show, and the organizer says all is set for the biggest housing show within Africa. Convener of Abuja International Housing Show says over the past 15 years, the brand has entrenched itself as an event of highly significant interest to stakeholders in the global built sector. AIHS has grown to become the largest housing and construction exhibition on the African continent, attracting the participation of critical stakeholders from different parts of the world and stakeholders desirous of knowing the current trend in the built sector. Lagos State Government plans to de-risk the housing and mortgage sector, unlocking its potential for economic growth by incorporating foreclosure law into its mortgage and property policy. The mortgage and property law seeks to encourage growth in real estate and regulate consumer loans for property realization in the state. It also seeks to create a conducive environment for accessible and affordable mortgage to benefit the people and help them acquire their own homes by paying a certain percentage of the cost of the units and paying the balance over a period of years while residing in the property. The proposed amendment bill, when signed into law, will include sale by public auction, voluntary surrender of mortgage property in lieu of foreclosure, and foreclosure in default of payment of mortgage amounts. Following the Federal Executive Council's approval for the resumption of the Federal Capital Development Authority's land swap initiative, property developers and government officials are divided over prospects of the scheme. While some property developers believe that years of suspension have cast a doubt on the program and devaluation of the Naira will escalate costs of infrastructure, others say a new start will boost housing delivery and attract foreign investors. The initiative worth about 1 trillion naira, initiated under Senator Bala Mohammed led administration, was specifically designed to remedy the infrastructure deficit in the federal capital through swapping land with private investors who would in turn provide the necessary infrastructure. Governor of Ogun State, Dakwa Biodun, has inaugurated 130 housing units in Kemta, Idiaba, in Abeokuta, the Ogun State capital. Inaugurating the housing project, christened Prince Court Estate, Governor Biodun said this is the first phase of a 300 detached and semi-detached two- and three-bedroom structures. The project is first in a series of housing estates being undertaken by this administration across the state, insisting 2,500 houses will be provided in four years. The governor explained that the estate is provided with amenities such as third road, water supply, good drainage system, fence, security and power supply. To read the full details of the news and more, visit www.africanhousingnews.com. Access to housing is an important determinant of quality of life and human welfare, one that is both crucial to family well-being and essential to the overall health of the people. Investment in affordable housing construction currently remains far below the level of public offers. Yet another avenue to reduce the cost of housing development is to have an improved business environment for investors. This report coming up seeks to highlight the importance of this. Despite huge expenditure over decades, a closer look on living conditions of Nigerians in various states across the nation puts a damper on claims of massive infrastructural developments by state governments. One reflection of this state is the Global Livability Index 2021, prepared by the Economist Intelligence Unit, which ranked Lagos as the second worst city to live in at 139th out of 140 major world cities. 
Real estate developers say the huge housing deficit in Nigeria could be closed to the barest if state governments take decisions to improve the business environment with formulation and implementation of robust policies and programs to encourage investors and instill confidence that there will be return on investments. The ease of doing business at the state level is what will encourage developers to do more. Most of us are finding it difficult, very, very difficult to assess some of the things that will attract investors in our city states. So we want to use this opportunity to plead with state governments to please relax some of the conditions of uh, uh, registering titles, especially in uh, some of our states. It's very difficult for developers. I'm saying this because this is what we're into, this is what we know. It should help developers to achieve their targets. I believe with this, there will be a lot more you know, on our side. Investigations show that state governments remain far from delivering optimal infrastructure, social services and security for their citizens. And experts say to achieve this transformation, which could greatly reduce rural-urban migration, state governors must increase support for real estate developers by eliminating unnecessary bottlenecks and making available more funds for the sector. Uh, the same is government will intervene by providing land, subsidize the tidy deeds to that to those lands. These are part of aspect that the government will contribute to ensure that houses prices is lower to the people. The government now can still ensure that all the mortgage banks that will give money to the developers at a very low interest rate of single digit. That can also afford, uh, assist in lowering the price of land or, or the houses at the end of the day. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, trade, telecommunication, agriculture and real estate drove Nigeria's exit from recession. In the fourth quarter of 2020, real estate contributed 5.7% to national gross domestic product, making it one of the top eight positive contributors. The chance to be a homeowner in Abuja is here, thanks to Demark Integrated Projects Limited, unveiling the Demark Hillview Estate in Kubwa, Abuja, which boasts of luxury flats with the option of two or three bedrooms with flexible payment plans. Demark Hillview Estate features water body supply and borehole, dedicated transformer, adequate drainage systems, spacious ensuite bedrooms, and CCTV with 24 hour on site monitoring. We also have duplexes in Kabusa and City Gate. For inquiries, visit Demark Hillview Estate behind Liberty Hotel near Living Faith Church, Biajin, Kubwa, Abuja. You can visit our website www.demarkprojects.com or send an email to demarkprojects at gmail.com. You can also call 0803-4506-661 or 0802-6384-618 or 0815-7002-799. Demark Hillview Estate, a place you can call home. Welcome back. In as much as we advocate for an improved business environment for investors, which will help close the housing shortage in the country, the quality of houses built should not be compromised. The national president of the Nigerian Institute of Building, Buda Kunle Awobudu, also emphasized the importance of building to approve standards to avoid building collapse. <music> I'm Debbie Erb. I work for OPIC in the United States and uh, keep watching the affordable housing development program. Across Nigeria in recent times, building collapse has killed several people and injured scores of others. Those who should know within the built environment note with strong dismay that lack of strict adherence and enforcement of building rules by developers remains a key contributing factor. President Nigerian Institute of Builders, Kule Awobodu, hinges the increase in cases of building collapse in the country to compromise in standards, adding that if registered builders were given the opportunity to do their work, the case would have been different. Let there be a law in place that on every building site, registered builder should be engaged 
to handle the building production process as an expert. Don't let us look at the benefit. Don't let us look at the profit to be derived from building project. Let us, let us place the risk above benefit. That somebody will be held accountable. Then, everybody will become cautious. The responsibility to end incessant building collapse in Nigeria must be shared by all stakeholders. Accountability given an exalted position and professionals within the sector must insist that strict enforcement of rules and recommendations be made. This, according to Awobodo, will eliminate quackery and guarantee building standards across the country. If you have conscience, you will never be at ease whenever you witness building collapse. Some of our force have been on several sites of building collapse. The same story of sadness, lamentations, that this type of calamity is avoidable. Speaking from an expert's perspective, President Nigerian Institute of Builders, Kunle Awobodo, says as long as Nigeria and Nigerians continue to tolerate shoddy building construction by using substandard materials in a bid to cut corners, then the desire to eliminate this menace, save lives, properties and investment will remain only a wish. What is the name of my grandson? Suleiman. That's a good name. May the Almighty preserve him. I mean. Now that your family is growing, this is the time for you to start thinking of a house of your own. Abba, the thought of this has always been on my mind. To build a house now, you need a lot of money. And that is what is holding me back. Sunny, what you need is a mortgage. NHF Mortgage Loan. With NHF Mortgage Loan, you own a house up front and pay gradually over a long period of time. Abba, I will go to the FMBN office right away. Come join us at FMBN and let's shelter Nigeria together. The program is housing development. Glad to know you're still with us. Abuja International Housing Show is just a few days away. How ready are the organizers of this largest housing and construction event in Africa? Now let's hear from Festus Adebayo, the coordinator of Abuja International Housing Show. tell you in a very clear word, we are ready. The management has started preparing for this program as far back as last year. You know, last year event took place virtually, and that is the reason why I think we have been having so much people asking for how to participate in this year event. Last year we couldn't have a project international housing show physically. At this is the major event in the Africa housing industry. So I must tell you, we are ready. In terms of security, we are ready. In terms of logistic, we are ready. I can tell you, COVID-19 has taught us another good lesson. This year, International Housing Show is going to be live everywhere. And we're going to be live on one or two televisions as well, for nothing less than one hour, for people to be able to interact, to be able to see who are really is happening at the venue. So this time around we're going to have a competition on affordable housing design and ideas. We have advised them, we have rolled out, we have received over 800, as at this point we have received over 800 applications drawn from different universities, different parts of Nigeria. Apart from the youth program, we're going to also have a PropTech, a property technology platform. We have the ministers from Cameroon, Minister from Ghana, 
who have confirmed their participation. And I must also tell you, we have, invo we have invited a lot of our ministers, we have invited a good number of our honorable members in the House of Representatives and also in the Senate. Our usual CEOs forum, we still hold the leading CEOs in the Nigeria housing industry, real estate and construction, uh, a good number of them have already confirmed participation. I must also let you know that we are also discussing 3D technology that have just been introduced by Lafarge. Lafarge is with us as one of our partners for HRKS 2021. Thank God is with you. All the leading brands you can think of are with us. Hmm. So we are ready. The 13th Abuja International Housing Show with the theme, Driving Sustainable Housing Finance Models in the Midst of Global Uncertainty, attracted 40,000 participants and over 400 exhibitors from 21 countries. The 13th AIHS hosted over 30 international and local guest speakers during its CEO forum and conferences focusing on specific aspects of the event's theme, including a total of 45 panelists in nine plenary sessions. It's a fantastic show. It brings stakeholders from across the continent. So it's the Abuja housing show. You would think it would be just about Abuja, but in fact it's about the whole of Nigeria, the whole of West Africa. You have stakeholders coming from all over and in fact globally. It's a great place for me to meet my colleagues um, and to see what's new in housing across the board. Affordable housing in Nigeria is extremely important and uh, it, it's a complicated situation. It requires cooperation of government and families and banks and developers and all the people that are going to be here at this conference over the next several days. So I think what makes this type of venue important is it gives all of the stakeholders a chance to come together and figure out ways to, to solve the affordable housing needs of people in Nigeria. I think it's a fantastic initiative and if you just look out in the audience right now, you have the who's who of the marketplace. You've got managing directors of, of banks and mortgage companies and developers. So uh, I'm looking forward forward to um, having some detailed conversations with our existing partners, meeting a whole bunch of new people, and having some fascinating conversations to really go help grow the marketplace. If we want to do better, we have to do better all together, not just the, the construction sector, because the housing sector is much more than construction. We have policymakers involved, we have land that is a big component of housing, uh, we have the financial uh, institutions that are also big stakeholders and important stakeholders because they finance housing both at the developer side and at the household and user side. Um, so it's something we have to work on all together and for that I think this event is a great event to bring all people together around those important issues and discuss how we can work together and improve the housing value chain, how each link can connect better to the next one so we can uh, improve access to housing for all Nigerians. My name is Kona Norisakwe, Executive Director, Board Member, Constricts Real Estate Development Company. Um, on the 26th to 29th of July, there's only one place anybody who's interested in real estate should be, and everybody should be at the Abuja International Housing Show. This is a hub where everybody who is in the real estate sector comes to. This is a place where you cannot afford not to be at because you have the developers, the manufacturers, the financiers, if you want to learn about real estate, if you want to buy the best houses, if you want to be a part of that environment, that's where you should be at. And also at Construct as well, we'll also be there. Uh, make sure you come see us.
Abuja International Housing Show is, is a show that must not be missed. And I say to all members of the Nigerian Institute of Town Planners, we've said this at a workshop that we had last week. We actually advertised it. We had the workshop of the Association of Town Planning Consultants. And we have even urged them, and those of them who have projects that we can exhibit in our booth. We're going to take a booth this year. Uh, I'm inviting all town planners in the public sector, the private sector, and in the academia. And I'm also letting them know that there's a day for planning where we're going to discuss green housing and smart cities. You should be on the lookout this year's Abuja International Housing Show will be exceptional. One of the most prominent features of your house is your roof. Your roof will tell how old your building is. At Plus World, we pride ourselves in having the expertise and products to bring your roof back to life. While other roofing companies suggest removing the roof, we restore the roof with warranty assurance. Let Plus World Roofing recoach your old and fading roofs and make your roofs brand new. Our products are eco-friendly and completely harmless to human and the environment. We offer services that will sustain your roof's integrity and by extension, your property value. This includes roof repairs and maintenance for residential, commercial and industrial properties. Our roof restoration solution saves you up to 70% the cost of replacing your roof. Contact Plus World Roofing today. Festo Sadebayoda, the coordinator of Abuja International Housing Show, speaking of his readiness to host the biggest housing event in Africa, taking place in Abuja, the federal capital territory. All right, moving on. When is the best age to own a house? There is no right age to buy a house, but then it is smart to evaluate where you are in life as you decide whether or not to buy. On Voices on the Streets, let's seek the opinions of Nigerians on the right age to own a house. I think a youth can own a home at the age of 25. Once you are an adult, starting from the age of 18, yes, putting your vision and plan and your initiative together, you can actually own a house at the age of 18. It's possible. I think as from 23, you should be able to own a home. I believe that after school, try and get your job, get yourself fixed. The next thing for you to do is get a home. So long you are eligible to vote, you should be able to get a home. Fully persuaded about the need for a more sustainable, modern, creatively crafted and functional design, Urban Shelter Limited has developed yet another masterpiece that so easily breaks the borders of creativity and dispels mediocrity. Well seated and over 210,000 square meter of land and marked for housing development, the Promenade Estate is located in an excellent part of the federal capital territory, Lokogoma, a central point in Abuja. Proximal to most places of relative significance and attraction and edged by multiple access roads where homeowners can swiftly meet up with schedules and appointments. Pushing the frontiers of communal living, the Promenade Estate has within its borders two-bedroom and four-bedroom semi-detached for the purpose of facilitating communal living, while homeowners have well-defined mutually exclusive spaces. The Promenade Estate appeals to the minds of intellectuals, professionals and homeowners who have a thirst for a house that sits comfortably on global standard. Urban shelter setting the pace. 
while you've had it all from Nigerians on the right age to own a house, 18 years, 23 or 30, how easy will it be for someone within this age bracket to own a house in this climb? That question is still begging for an answer. On that note, I call it a wrap on today's episode of Housing Development. Thanks for watching. I remain Flora Arnie, your housing diva. Do stay safe.